Hello, New Life Church. My name is Tim Clay. I am the youth pastor at our NLC Greenbrier campus, and I am honored to bring yet another Devo to you today. And we are looking at the book of Jonah, specifically chapter 1, verse 5b, all the way through 6. It says, But all this time Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold, so the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe... He will pay attention to us and spare our lives. I don't know if you've been following along with us in this Jonah devotional series, but you'll notice that in verse four in the beginning of five, that Jonah and the men on this crew are in the presence of a great storm. So the captain and the, and the rest of his crew, they are praying all to their different gods, all of different religions, in hopes that one of them is listening and will spare their lives. Put yourself in the captain's shoes. So he's he's looking around, he's trying to figure out, wait a minute, there's, there's a person missing, and realizes that Jonah, the man who has him there in the first place, is missing. So he goes down to the hold and doesn't find Jonah in a fetal position. No, that one would have made sense. No, he finds him asleep in the midst of this storm. And he wakes him up and tells him, hey, pray to your God that he might save us. There's, there's some interesting things happening in this scripture. That's why I love the word of God. Is any, Even in a small excerpt like this, there's so much content. It's so deep. It's so rich. Essentially what's happening here, first and foremost, is that all these men are praying to gods who are nothing, and can do nothing ultimately. And they turn to the one man who has a relationship with the one true God, has walked with him, has talked with him, has worshiped him and knows his word, and he's asleep. Secondly, what's interesting about this scripture is the irony of the situation, is that they're asking this man to pray to his God when not knowing it, that he is actually trying to escape and run away from the will of the one true God. It's almost as if, I want you to notice this, that it's like the group project that has a deadline. You're stressing about it, it's due soon, and everybody's working hard, and then you look over and there's one person who's not only just not doing anything, they're completely oblivious to what's happening. There's a great frustration there. And so you can imagine being in a captain's shoes, he's so mad, not in the sense that he's not doing anything, but because there are all these men that he's in charge of and their lives are at a great risk in hopes that one of these gods will save their lives. Notice the third thing about this scripture. It parallels a very big, famous story that happens in the Gospels. One of the Gospels that that includes this story is Matthew, and it's in Matthew 8, 23 through 27. It's when Jesus is sleeping on a boat along with the disciples in the midst of a great storm. Another parallel is whenever he is on his way to a nut, to to a heathen country, just like Jonah is supposed to be. Yet Jonah is fleeing God's will. Jesus is walking in God's will. And yet what's happening? What's the similarity between the two stories? They're both still walking through a great storm. They're still having to travel through a great storm. And yes, all the men that are around these two men are frantic. They're freaking out because the one man who has a one true relationship with God, has walked with him, has talked with him, has worshiped him, knows his word, is asleep. That word sleep in the Greek translation means to be dead, to almost be in a dead dead state. So like in a deep sleep. Now there's a lot of foreshadowing, especially to the experience of the death and resurrection of Jesus. However, what we need to notice about this story is that We are like the disciples. We are perishing in great waters, as Psalms 18 through 17 puts it. But we are saved by faith in Jesus, our creator, who died and rose again so that we might experience a great calm, as Matthew 8, 25 puts it, and return to life on dry ground once more. I know that Jonah can seem like a four chapter book, maybe can seem insignificant. Yeah, it's famous, we all know the story, 
but it plays such a bigger role, especially into the story of salvation of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I am thankful that we serve a God, that we walk with a savior, that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, that in the midst of whatever storm that we walk through, that we have a God who has the authority to rebuke it, just like Jesus did back then in the gospels over 2000 years ago. He's doing that for us today. So I hope this encourages you and I can't wait to see where the rest of this series takes us. God bless you.